They're into the semi-final of the EFL Cup, which practically means the trophy is ours. There's just a small matter of getting past Manchester United, who may or may not have beat us in the first leg. But that doesn't matter, because today, we're going to win. Hopefully. How you doing, everybody? I'm welcome to part five of Club Four here on my career on FM23. I'm Stu. Thank you for joining me in today's video where we've got Watford first in the FA Cup. We've got that one before we've got the game against Manchester United, the second leg of the semi final of the EFL Cup, which, as mentioned, we are currently losing in, but hopefully we can turn things around. And if you are excited to see whether we can do that, don't forget to leave a like on the video for me and subscribe so you don't miss any of the football manager nonsense coming from this face right here. Since you were last with us, on the whole, things have been really, really good. Uh, the last time you saw us was the Birmingham game. I think it was Everton and Birmingham, wasn't it? So as you can see, we've had a really good run since then. Uh, scrappy 2-1 win against West Ham. Got past Sheffield United 2-0. And then, well, I mean, this game was bonkers. I mean, we considered those two goals. I think it makes it look a little bit better than it actually was. But you can see, we got a hat-trick from Pinamonte there. They got two back very quickly, but then we just settled things down as the game went on with Hizek doing some good work there and Sabozla doing some good work as well. But then we batter Crystal Palace 5 0, another Pinamonte hat trick um, in the game against Crystal Palace. And then, of course, because of, he's got back to back hat tricks, I left him out against Manchester United. And at the moment, I do think I've got him left out in the team, but I'm having buys one more say over that. So I think he'll be restored for the game against Watford. Transfer news is happening, though. That is something I need to bring to you. So. Player out of the club. We can confirm Julian Alvarez and Calvin Bassi have both left. We'll start with Calvin Bassi. He has gone for £17.5 million. Pounds. He was signed in the summer. Nothing to do with me. He was never going to play for us. Got most of the money back, which is really helpful. Uh, we've also got, if I can find him, Julian Alvarez has left as well. Although we made up with him, because we're playing two strikers, we don't really need him. It would just be too many forward-thinking players. And if he could play in centre mid, I might have kept him. But we've moved him on. He has gone to West Ham United for £20 million. Only a £5.5 .5 million loss there. So I'm okay with that. But then with those funds, we have brought in one player so far. And that is a new central defender, praise be Jeebus. It is Jeremy Albergi. He has come in. Belgian 24-year-old, 48 caps already at 24 years old. He's got the one goal for them. He's come in from Frankfurt. It's £55 million. We didn't pay all of that up front. It's mostly on instalments. He's played one league game for us so far. Got a decent rating. Looks the business. He is going to be starting today against Watford. And then we are currently in the middle. I'm trying to sign this guy. Elias Akamak. Akomac? Akomak. Elias. We'll call him Elias. Uh, we're signing Elias. He is a winger predominantly, but can play in the middle as a Mazzara. 27 years old. Spanish international. Yes, it's only five caps, but still Spanish international. Um, struggling to get into Bayern Munich's team, but has got over 111 appearances for Bayer Leverkusen. Came through the Barcelona Academy, so must be decent. And we're hoping we'll get him through the door before the United game. If not, at least as soon as possible. But that does bring our summer spending... So far, to six million short of five hundred million, and transfers out two million. So that's a net spend of nearly three hundred million. That's a lot of money. But enough about that. It's time for the game against Watford, and here is your eleven that we are going to be using. I've already put Pinamonti in because future past you. Sorry, past you knew what he was doing. It is Dimitri in goal, James Derica, Albergi, and Boa in defence. Timber, Mans, Harris, and Sabazla in the middle with Pinamonti and Ratcliffe up front. Uh, the reason Timber is in is because Balaric has actually got an injury, but he's nearly fully fit again. He has been playing with support on his wrist, but his fitness has been a real struggle. So we've leaving him out today. Hopefully he'll be fully fit for the game against Manchester United. That is the hope. Um, I'm going to apologise, by the way. If my voice sounds really iffy, I've got a combination of hay fever and a cold. Now, the weather here, while I've been... The time period that I'm recording this video... The weather has been sensationally good up until today, and I feel like I've been hit in the last couple of days with the worst hay fever, but it also could be a cold. So if I do so... One minute. Always forget when I played it on my laptop change the settings um so yeah basically long story short if i sound a bit rough that's the reason why um i mean i felt awful last night I felt awful this morning i've woken up a little bit now and uh, feel a little bit more alive so i thought let's get the recording going um we have stuck with the 4132 formation and as you can see we do have harris in the middle as the playmaker he's got a few assists from there actually so he's looking good but obviously if we can bring in elias then 
It's likely that we'll switch to Boslai to that role, and then we've got Harris as a spare. I think that makes the most sense. Ratcliffe coming so close to opening the scoring there. Um, that's the plan anyway, whether we actually do... I mean, to be fair, I'll say whether we actually do that route. No, we are going to do that route, because that will be our best three midfielders. Ideally, we do need another one, and if Jury and Timber was fit, he would be the guy we'd be moving out the door to make the funds for it. We just don't have him fit in time for this transfer window, so it's just not going to work. But Nicholas Harris is making a great claim to stay in this team, even if we get Elias in, because he's just gone and scored. 1-0 to Chelsea in the 17th minute. Get in, boys. Pinamonte gets it out wide to Rhys James. Rhys James looks up, runs forward a bit. Waits for the right moment, and he just gets the pass into the middle. There's Harris in the middle, completely unmarked, and it is 1-0. Very happy with that indeed. Uh, let's go get a second, boys. Sounds like a plan to me. Let's go get a second. So, like having a very good game. Pinamonte James as well. Most of our team actually playing quite well. Alberghi's actually got a yellow card on his full debut here, which is a bit of a concern. And actually, Derike is currently outplaying him, which I do find quite amusing. Right, ball to Pinamonte. Pinamonte can't get there, but Reese James does get it. Oh, a bit of a back and forth there, but we do get it in the end. Pinamonte tries to get it into Ratcliffe, and Ratcliffe did have a bit of a horrible miss earlier, but Pinamonte, the assist machine, who would have thought that was going to be a thing? manages to get the assist for Ratcliffe. It's the other way around to how it should be, but I don't care as long as we score goals. But it is 2-0. I asked for a second goal. The lads haveth delivered-eth. I mean, it's a bit of a scrappy assist, but I'll take it because it does mean that we have more of a lead. And I'm happy with that. Um, Aston Villa versus Tranmere. Pulling up my heartstrings there. Team of support versus the team I really enjoyed playing with in this save and Villa are in the lead not that you can I don't know if you can see it my big head in the camera might be in the way it might not be I don't know um I'm talking about anything other than the game because at the moment we're doing pretty well and there's not a lot to talk about um in terms of midfielders um I found Elias but beyond him it's been slim pickings for the budget that we've got we've only got about 15 million pounds 15 16 million pounds to spend so, although it will be a deal worth around 55 million, somewhere in that region, or 58 million it might be actually. Although it's a deal that's in that general region, a lot of it's on instalments. So we are going to have to be careful next season with transfers because we're spending a lot of money that we don't currently have at the moment. And I think next season we're going to have to stick to the transfer budget a little bit more. Kind of like how we tried to do at Southampton. I think we did in one of the seasons, did quite successfully. We didn't put any transfers, or if we did, it was very few onto installments ball through to Pinamonte Pinamonte's there Pinamonte makes it three and it's Quentin Timber with a rare assist and it's been disallowed because of course it has because the football manager gods don't want me to have nice things <laughs> I mean that's harsh I think that's very harsh he comes back on side as well during the move I think that's very harsh but 2-0 it remains I'll take that 2 nils fine we have dominated them but 2-0, we know, we've talked about it before, is a very, very uncomfortable scoreline to have. Because all it takes is one goal and everything gets shaky. Right, Pinamonte, into Mount. Harris now, looking up, looking for options. Goes back to Timber, over to Mount. Mount now. Big ball over the top to Reese James. Reese James now, into Pinamonte. Pinamonte does get his goal and it's Reese James with the assist. And he does have 17 for the season, finally. Good times. Good times indeed. 3-0. And I think, unless there's a Herculean comeback from Watford, that's probably game set and match in the first half already. Lovely ball from Mason Mount, by the way. He has got that in his locker. Pinamonte, edge of the area. Smash. Playing more like peak Frank Lampard with assists and goals on the outside of the area, on the edge of the area. Love it. Love what I'm seeing from Andrea Pinamonte. Comes in and he's the veteran striker. And he's doing his job superbly while we wait for Skinner to kind of become the full kind of player we can rely on. And he's actually won a penalty here, Pinamonte. I think. Yeah, he has. He's won a penalty. Um, I'm going to assume it's Sabozlai who's going to take it because he usually is our penalty taker. It is Sabozlai indeed. And Sabozlai just rolls it in. Calm as you like. And it is for... Nil against Watford kind of would be expected us to dominate them with the quality that we have and That'll do ring the bell. I'm happy to go home now if the lads are happy I'll even let them have a couple of goals for forfeiting um, But as long as we can win I mean we'll go home now save the energy for the United game. I don't think that's an option somehow, but we have dominated them so far And I am delighted. I'm just gonna tell our Bergie 
Just be a bit careful. We don't want you getting suspended. Just calm yourself down. But now we can look at damage limitation for the game against Manchester United. We can look at players to potentially rest. And, I mean, the midfield is the one that I'd like to rest. We just don't have the cover for it. That's the problem. That's why they're getting tired. Ideally, Mason Mount wouldn't have played today. He is probably going to be the player who comes off. Carl Ratcliffe's in again, by the way. And Carl Ratcliffe is denied by a cheeky little save by the goalkeeper. It's a lovely little save, actually. Maybe Ratcliffe was trying to be a bit too clever there. But you know what? It's all good. Appreciate him trying. Right, so Barzlai with the corner. Looking for the header pin Amanti, who just puts it wide. And I think the substitution we are going to make is Mason Mount. Possibly with James and Boa as well. I don't know if I've actually got... An option on the bench for left back. So we might not be able to do the Boa substitution. But Mount is going to come off. Lewis Murray is going to come on. That transfer coming in more handy than I thought. I've got to be honest with you. Antonio Silva can come on at left back. That I'm okay with. And then Sabozla is tiring too. But we don't really have an option other than Benson Kerr. And actually, I am going to take us up, take him up on that. So Benson Kerr can go in the middle. Harris can go to the Mazala role because he's shown he can get forward in this game. And we'll make those three changes now. And then we'll have a look towards the end of the game of any other changes that we want to make. That feels like the right thing to do. Resting the important players who are very, very tired. Mount in particular really ideally wouldn't have played today, but I'm okay with bringing Lewis Murray off the bench. I'm not sure I'm okay with him starting a game, especially our first FA Cup game of the season. Um, Watford are in and Watford have scored. And Carlo Mouani, I feel like, scores against me so often in football manager when you get into the future. Don't know what it is about him. He doesn't look particularly special, but he's just a good goal scorer. And I'm a bit frustrated that we've allowed that to happen. I'm going to demand more from the boys. I'd have liked to clean sheet today. We haven't got one. I'm a little bit annoyed. But it's 4-1. It's fine. Time is on our side. We haven't got that much time left for them to get back into it. So I would think things are going to be okay. We will make our final... Well, we'll let the highlight play out first. And then we'll make our final two changes. Watford coming forward again. We are letting them have a bit more of the ball in this half. And I'm not very happy with the way that we're doing it. But Dimitri does make a good save there. Right. I am going to break tradition. You're not meant to make a... Well, I don't know where I've heard it from. You're not meant to make a substitution before corners. Doing just that, though. Lewis Murray apparently having a shocking game since he's come on. Benson Kerr not doing that well either. I'm looking at the forwards. I'm thinking Carl Ratcliffe can come off for Heshek because Heshek just has the Midas touch with him when it comes to just coming off the bench. He just seems to be that kind of player who does a great job. Reese James as well as the final sub. We can get Milson on and give him some football. That will do. Let's get into the rest of the game and let's see whether we can just see this game off. I'd like to score another goal to make up for the one that we conceded, if I'm honest. I'd very much like that. Demand more, please. Corner. Benson Kurt whipping it in, looking for Albergi. Albergi doesn't really jump for it. Harris on the ball goes for a worldie. The keeper kind of just parries it down, but none of our players can react quickly enough to it. Nice idea from Harris trying to catch the keeper off guard. Could have worked if there were more Chelsea players in that region. Our players just kind of triple up on Colin Moani there. And we end up with possession. Ed Milson now looking to get the ball forward. Gets it to Benson Kerr. Benson Kerr looking for Hijek. Hijek not really on the same wavelength as Benson Kerr. Which, you know, fine. Neither of them play that often. I can understand it. But now Watford build from the back. Colin Moani to Despedov. Despedov to Chowdhury. Colin Moani again. But we do get the ball back. Benson Kerr into Timber. Timber looking for Murray. Murray now. Looking to drive forward. Get it to Pinamonte. Is Pinamonte going to get another goal? Hits the post. And actually, Bogle could have let it go out for a goal kick instead. We now have a throw in. Bit of a mistake from Bogle there, if we're being honest. But we have another highlight. 88th minute now. Timber with the tackle, but Watford keep possession. Rich is looking for Despadov. Despadov looking to get the ball forward. Runs with it to begin with. Is he going to lay it off? Doesn't so far. Still running with it. Our players not getting the ball off him. Good work from Despadov. Chowdhury now. Looking for Carlo Romani, who's completely unmarked. Getting it over. And Fernino has gone and got them a second. That's infuriating. We've just let them walk into there. I am not happy with you. And I'm not happy with you. Or with... That's how quickly the wrong things. You. You. And you not happy. Why why is it not letting me let me let me let me click on the players? Ah Right. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm gonna shout at you as well. Step up your game, boys. Step up your game. We've conceded two sloppy goals here. Come on now. But we see the game through. It is four two. 
I'll say that it was a good game. I'm a bit disappointed with the two sloppy goals we conceded in the second half. We actually lost the second half 2-0. That's disappointing. But the main thing is we go through to the next round. We've got some time for Mason Mount to come off the pitch. Same with Sabazlai. Same with Reese James. That makes me feel a bit better. And we have had the warning for Mount and Fitness again. He's got three days where he can be rested against his real-life team, Manchester United, now. Another good game from Pinamonte. Pinamonte has just been sensational so far this season for us. We are without Boa for the next game. Though. That is a concern. But if we just look at Pinamonte, 14 goals and 9 assists in 22 Premier League games. That's ridiculous. Three goals and one assist in five cup competitions too. I mean, Pinamonte has been a top draw player for us all the way through this season. Not on the goal scoring charts, but he's second in both average rating and assists and also on player of the match. Dimitri is third, joint third in terms of clean sheets. So Lanina has got one more than him in the league. So that is worth pointing out. But the 32-year-old is doing himself very much justice. I'm going to give Antonio Silva the game against Manchester United. David Ram can go on the bench. I just, he's not. I mean, he is a, he's a natural left back though. So actually... I should really start David Raum, really, shouldn't I? I'm asking you as if you're going to reply to me. Um, Balaric will start the next game as well. Um, I'm getting the team ready now for some reason. I don't really know why. We'll keep the forward line as is. We'll keep the midfield as is as well. And Harris did really bad. All three of these guys did really, really well in that last game. So we'll keep them as is. We'll put Balaric in there behind them. I think that'll work. Right. Next up, Manchester United. Let's see whether we can overturn that one goal deficit. Back for the United game, but we have had to navigate a couple of difficult things just in a little gap between. First of all, uh, Elias has yet to sign, but work permit is ongoing, so he is going to be a player that will be playing for us very, very soon. Uh, but we have had offers in for three, well, for two players and one player who won't go anywhere. Reese James had an offer in for uh, from Real Madrid for 20 and a half million rises to 44 million pounds. I mean, his valuation. Um, if we have a look on here, is up to 38. So that wouldn't have been a bad offer on that end. This end, not too happy with, but he didn't want to go, so we rejected it. We don't want him to go just yet anyway. The difficult one was Cal Balaric. He does want to go. He wants to go to Bayern Munich, but their offer was 26 million up front, rising to 81 million. His value is over 100 million. Actually, I can get his transfer value uh, up to 144 million before we start saying, ah, that's too much. So he's agreed to stay up until the end of the season. And if we don't qualify for the Champions League, bearing in mind we're currently first or second, if we don't qualify for the Champions League, then we have agreed to sell him. But if he, if we stay in the Champions League, basically if we qualify for the Champions League, can't get words out, then we're all good. But this is the 11 for the game against Manchester United. And we are without Marlon Boa, which is a bit of a frustration. And we have got yellow cards on Timber and Garcia and also Mason Mount. So we'll do what we can to get through. And fingers crossed, we don't lose too many players for the final. It is Dimitri Mingol, James Derica, Albergi and Raum in the defence. Malaric, Mount, Harris and Sabazla in the middle with Pinamonti and Ratcliffe up front. Apologies for the delay. Had to do our position instructions because... Of course, I forgot to do that before I started recording. Of course I did. Uh, but let's see what happens. Um, I am not overly hopeful of this game. We are at home for this leg. So the fact that we only lost 1-0 away from home does fill me with confidence. But again, losing 1-0 to Manchester United, not a problem. Especially when we're in the kind of transitional phase at the club that we are. And it is important to remember that we've made a lot of change this year. I mean, look at that 11. Dorica's new. Albergi's new. Um... Pinamonti's new. Like, okay, there's three players in the 11, but we're playing a different system to what they've used before. Um, we are trying a few different things out, like that midfield is not something I typically use. Um, oh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Pinamonti nearly getting in the way of Benford there. We know Benford's a decent left back, but nearly getting the work in. Right, big ball in. Dorica manages to intercept. It's a heavy touch from him, and Van Dweven is in there. Van Dweven, save. Dorica, James, cleared. Oh, my word. Dorica just dwelling on the ball there. Heavy touch. We're going to tell him to focus on the job at hand because that could have been a problem. Benford has just hacked Pinamonte. And are we about to get a slice of luck early on here? It's the 22nd minute. And Dale Benford, formerly of Southampton on loan, has been sent off here at Stamford Bridge. That opens a door for us massively. And we now need to take advantage of that. 
We now need to take a massive advantage of that. But we have not had a shot on target so far, which is a concern. They've now dropped one of their defensive, one of their attacking midfielders. But now they've got a free kick. Van Dwyven. Van Dwyven. Van Dwyven. Van Dwyven. I don't know. Van Dwyven. That sounds better. Van Dwyven with the free kick. We are into added time of the first half. Is he going to put this top bins? No. Because Dimitru is an absolute... G, but our attempts on target in this game has not been good enough. Not bad, not bad, not good enough. But they've been playing okay. Now, Nicholas Harris hasn't had the best of games, so I think we'll take him off. And I think we'll bring on Lewis Murray. And we'll put Sabazlai as the playmaker. Defensively, not a good game for Reese James. Ed Milson can come on. I think that makes a lot of sense. We'll bring on... Someone who's younger, got a bit more pace. I think that makes a lot of sense. We'll give that a go and see what happens. And just try something different. I'm tempted to go attacking as well. We won't do it for now. We'll leave things as they are. But we are going to fire the boys up. Because we've got a great opportunity in this game. Right, Murray now on the ball. Looking to get to Sabah's like can't quite get there. Nemec now, back to Washington Louise. Ferguson, to Josic. Josic now, running out wide, looking for Van Dwyven. Van Dwyven nearly runs it out of play, but holds up. Josic now, back to Nemec. Nemec looking for options. Nemec gets it all the way to Alvaro Fernandez. United still doing very well with the possession here. Big ball over the top. Van Dwyven is in. And now we have to really do something. Because even with a man down, United have gone ahead. And we need to step up our game here. Because all of a sudden, Manchester United have got a foot and a half into the final. And that's not good enough when they're a man down, quite frankly. I've talked them up in the first game. I said they are a very good team and we're in a rebuild phase. But we've been gifted an opportunity here today and we're not taking it. And quite frankly, that isn't good enough. Speaking of which... He's check is coming on. We know he can do good from the substitutes bench. Let's see whether he can make it happen for us today. Dorica not having a good game either. Might consider taking him off Balaric as well. We've only got, I think, one substitution left though. So we need to get something happening now because we are running out of time. So Boslo with the corner looking for Dorica. Can't find him. Ratcharella manages to get the ball, but Sabazlai gets it back off of him. Sabazlai, he's going to hit it, isn't he? He's going to hit it. He's hit it, and it's a stupid thing to do. And we're trying to force the play, sure, but that just is a ridiculous thing to do. That's a panic. Right, Timber's off. Timber's on, rather. And then we need to make another decision, and I'm thinking we go three up top. I'm thinking we take one of the midfielders off. So Barzlai isn't playing that well. He just did that ridiculous move. Skinner's coming on. We're going three strikers up front. I'm just going to play all three of them as advanced forwards. And we'll just see what happens. Swap him and Pinarante around. These two can continue doing what they're doing. The wing backs can go forward. And I'm actually going to turn Timber into a half back. I'm going to press up a little bit more. Try and put more pressure on them. Play more in their half. We need two goals. I don't think we've got the time left to do it. We do not have the time left. They've gone very defensive to counter our very offensive system. And I think we've run out of time here. Been FM'd a little bit in that game. They go a man down. We've dominated them at the end in terms of possession, in terms of shots, in terms of shots on target, in terms of XG. But their passes completed was a bit better. And they just, when they got that goal, they just shut down and held on. And even with the firepower that we've got, and we've got some firepower, we just could not get through. I am going to point, now I'm going to thrash my arms and shout at them. Because really, there's no excuse to at least win the match after going a man down, so I think we can be a bit disappointed at that, but we are a very tired team at the moment, and we've got, sh oh, got Manchester City in the next game. Mount and Dorica are both shattered. If we're taking those guys out of the team, I mean, we just don't have the personnel. I mean, Lewis Murray is going to probably have to start the next game, as is Eric Garcia, or Antonio Silva, to be fair. Ram comes out, let's say, for Marlon Boa, and maybe he set comes on and plays next to Pinamonte. Or Skinner. Maybe we give Skinner a chance next to Pinamonte as well. And Nicholas Harris gets a bit of a telling off. But 
Disappointing game. However, we are top of the Premier League as things stand. Spurs did the Spurs. They have bottled things quite significantly, which means we are currently clear by three points. So I didn't really address this before, but that is the good side. I mean, Chelsea, the last time they won the league, it was back in 2016, 2017. They haven't won the game. They haven't won the league, sorry, since the game actually has started. So, you know, we're currently on course to do that. At the very least, we're on course to finish in the top four. And that is the main aim for this season. I haven't really talked about the main aim for this season. Priority is getting to the Champions League because we're here at Chelsea to win the Champions League and then move on to another club. Remember, we're one Champions League down out of three. That's the aim of the save. Starting to wish I stayed at Southampton, to be honest with you, because not being funny, built a bit of a good team there, and Pep Guardiola isn't doing very well with it. I mean, they're currently six, which sounds great, but when they finished in the top four for the last four seasons, that's disappointing. None of their players on any of these lists whatsoever, not even yellow cards. So, hmm. Can't help but be a bit annoyed at that, that he's not doing very well with a super team that I put together. Right, when are we going to be back? I think we'll try and get through this last part of the season as quickly as possible. Because although we have got the FA Cup to play for, next round is against Arsenal. I'm calling it now. We're getting knocked out of the FA Cup. So, I'm thinking we'll come back for two more games and then we'll call the season. Last game of the season against Southampton and Manchester United. That sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. And then we'll come back somewhere in the middle. Maybe Spurs, Norwich, somewhere in that period. I think that could be good fun. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe Norwich, Newcastle. Somewhere in here and then the final day of the season. That's what we're going to do in the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like on there for me. And subscribe so you don't miss any of the content coming in the future. It's completely free to do so. And it will make me a very happy man. I've been Stu. You guys have been awesome. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.